and to turn it around after investing all that energy Thursday night and have to grind out against a hell of a team here. Big time stretch for us. Yeah, big time job, fellas. You toughest team in college basketball. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, thank you for helping us play together as a unit, keeping us away from injuries. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once we free yeah. up. Yeah. Story at three on the west hand. Pass on over to Vastoria. Drives baseline reverse layup up and good. A brilliant drive. At the rim. Ponzi Colson. Out of Beecham who drives the lane for the posterizing jam. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with head coach Mike Bray. And we've often talked that one and one weeks in the ACC are good, but I'm not sure we've ever had a more impressive one and one week than going into Blacksburg and beating Virginia Tech and then taking a ridiculously deep and talented Florida State team down to the water. You're right. I think one and one weeks in this league this year ain't too bad, Jack, but uh, proud of our group with how we fought off another run in Blacksburg to win another road game. And then we ran into a heck of a team in Florida State, but I love how we battled all the way till the end. Another nice development this week. You have been consistently saying that Steve Astoria will go down as one of the greatest players in the history of this program, and folks are starting to notice. He got a share of his first eight ACC Player of the Week award. So well deserved. And the reason I refer to Steve like that is we know he plays both ends of the floor, but how he has won here. He's won an ACC championship. He's got six NCAA tournament wins under his belt. Probably going to put a few more on there. Now, the Irish began the week traveling to one of the most difficult places to play in the ACC, Castle Coliseum in Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. Tech had a 15-game home court winning streak. We'll show you how the Irish snapped that streak coming up right after this. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airline, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. Heading into Blattsburg, you had just broken Miami's 21-game home court winning streak. You had another 15-game one in your sights. Your team loves breaking streaks. You know, they really started to talk about that. We got Miami's. We had a day to kind of talk about a chance to break another one. And I love that we got off to a great start. That always helps on the road. In fact, how great was the start? 21-2 run breaking a 12-12 tie, you took the crowd out for most of the first half. We really did, and our bench gave us a great lift, again, just like they did against Miami. But there's no question, anytime you can get off to a good start on the road, it brings the volume down. Five different players scored during that run. How important is that? Well, and that's our balance. You know, again, we, we have the ability to really pass the ball. We know who we are. We know we can score it from a lot of different spots, and we kind of play with a free mind. And when we're flowing like that, we're really hard to deal with. Now, you knew Tech was going to make a run, and they did. They cut your lead to five early in the second half, but you mentioned your bench. T.J. Gibbs comes in. You have a 10-1 run. He scores six points in the run. He finished with a career-high 13. He's really coming on. You know, he really is, Jack, and his drives are really helping us. He's a physical, strong guard, even though he's a freshman, and he's driving the ball to the rim and making plays for us. Virginia Tech feeding off their crowd, stays with you the rest of the way. They tie the game at 59. Steve Astoria hits another huge shot of three. You know, that bomb he hit, you know, kind of makes you believe you can escape. But again, uh, crunch time Steve delivers when we really needed a shot in the arm. And he delivered that whole game. Other plays will be more remembered from this game, but he had 20 points in four assists. He was fabulous. Smooth, guarding their best guard on the other team, delivering like he always does. Uh, his team defense was great, rotating over, getting deflections. 152 left. Tech finally takes a one-point lead, and you come right back. First, Matt Farrell gets you the lead back with a layup, and then V.J. Beecham, who had struggled offensively, hits an 
amazing runner from the right side of the lane. I think VJ's shot hit every part of the rim before it went in, but that's the kind of guy he is. You know, he didn't make any shots much down the stretch, but then when we really need one, he delivers. And then the play. I've been calling it the steal, but you're overriding me. You're calling it the fumble recovery. <laughs> but maybe we should call it the forced fumble and recovery. Matt Farrell's great dive to steal the ball. They've been rolling the ball up to midcourt the whole game. You know, and he kind of lined the guy up all game, and I love how he kind of looked over at me and faked like uh, he was getting directions from his coach. But to have the presence of mind to get up without traveling and then kick it back to TJ, that really sealed it for us. One guy we haven't mentioned that we have to, Bonzi Bonzi, another double-double, 14 points, 12 rebounds, two blocks, a steal and an assist. I thought he kept his composure because they really guarded him in the first half, and then he kind of went into his junkyard dog mode and just was rebounding and battling in the paint. So the Irish win it in Blattsburg, 76-71, and that sets the stage for them to head into Tallahassee for a showdown with 10th-ranked Florida State. We'll show you all the highlights of that coming up right after this. You wrapped up a brutal three-game road trip, more than 3,900 miles traveled at Florida State. Now, Coach, if there is a deeper, more talented team in the country, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, they really have a lot of bodies that come at you. Played 13 guys against us. They defended the heck out of us, and we turned it over a little much, and we really couldn't run any of our sets. We just kind of had to play basketball and hit the open man, and I thought we did a great job of it, getting it down into game situations but probably their depth wore on us uh, at the end of the day. Seesaw game right from the start, 8.20 left in the half. Matt Farrell hit a big three, and that gave you a four-point lead. That was the largest lead for either team in the half. Yeah, it, it, you know, Matty senses the moment for us when we really need something. Time and time again, he's made a big bucket. Now, one of the biggest reasons you were able to stay with the Seminoles in the first half was, again, the outstanding play of T.J. Gibbs. T.J. Gibbs off the bench again in another game, hits two three-point shots. He's the Defending, making plays for us. His growth and his confidence is really a key for us moving forward. 11 points for him in the half. He hit all four of his shots in a very difficult atmosphere, but State is so big, it was really hard to keep them away from the basket. They had 20 points in the paint in the first half. Yeah, they got to our offensive board, a little, their offensive board a little bit, got some putbacks that hurt us. Uh, you know, that's an area where we're always kind of trying to concentrate on, can we limit second shots? You were down six at halftime. Crowds really into it. And this is where you needed your leadership. And they came up. VJ Beecham, Steve Astoria, Matt Farrell combined for 34 points in the second half. They were fabulous in a tough atmosphere. And I think those three guys as veterans now, and I'd add Bonzi too, they love playing on the road when the crowd is against them. But we continually made plays to give us a chance to win. And you got to be confident to hit threes. You hit 15 in the game. Was that part of the game plan? It really was. We thought we could get open looks because they can over rotate and we had to move them around and drive it. I thought we did a great job finding open three-point shooters. For us to have a chance to win, we were going to have to make threes because it's hard to score in the paint against them. Fans don't like to give credit to the other team, but sometimes you have to. And they are so deep, they don't necessarily have guys who go off. But one of their leaders, Rattan Mays, down the stretch made some big buckets. I thought, you know, it's the first game in league play where we had an opponent want to take a big shot and knock it in. His runner and his kind of 15-foot jump shot over TJ kind of were plays to say we're not losing tonight. And you got to mention those last two threes, the ridiculous three by Fluger, and then Dr. Clutch knocks one down from the corner of Astoria. You know, those two threes, again, keeps the game pressure on Florida State. Um, you know, Rex had not really shot it well to date, but Rex is a fearless guy. Steve Astoria from the corner is like death in taxes, and it? it's just automatic. However, you couldn't pull this one up. You lose 83-80. What'd you learn about your team? Loved, I learned that we still fight and believe and dig, and we were disappointed we couldn't snatch one. It's the first close one we've lost, but uh, it was a quick post-game discussion. We needed to get on back because Syracuse today can't, comes really quick. <laughs> Despite the height and length of the Seminoles, Bonzi Colson still managed to lead the Irish in rebounding with eight to go with nine points. We'll chat with the sophomore from Massachusetts right after this timeout.
Fonzie Colson is on an amazing run. He is averaging a double-double while leading the Irish in scoring and rebounding. He leads the ACC in double-doubles with 11. And here's the most amazing part. At just six foot five, the native of New Bedford, Massachusetts, leads the ACC in rebounding at just under 11 boards a game. Recently, Bonzi took some time to sit down with me to talk about his Notre Dame career to date. Top of the key, Colson to Farrell. Farrell stops. Nice pass to Colson for the two-handed jam. How has Bonzi Colson changed as a player between last season and this season? Um, I think it's more just understanding, you know, being here for three years, you kind of get a gist of everything and understanding how the culture of, you know, of, of, of how we play here. As we record this interview, you lead the ACC in double-doubles. In fact, you're averaging a double-double. Is that something you expected to do this year? Um, that was something that me and Coach Humphrey talked about and um, something that I thought I, you know, I could do. I'm trying to do it every game, you know, whether that's offense or defense, grab every rebound there is. And just on the offensive end, you know, just, you know, shooting my shot when it's there, you know, being confident and being decisive on that end. When I call a game on the radio, I work really hard to paint a picture in the listeners' minds of exactly what happens. And you were a challenge for me. Yeah. Because a lot of times you have the ball at your chest the next thing I know, it's in the basket, and I'm not quite sure how it got there, and neither is the defense. Every shot I take, I just look at it, I think I'm going to make it, and just getting a feel for it, where I work on, you know, some of those shots. I just feel it, fall through it all with every shot I take, and I'm, I'm blessed for, you know, some of them to go in. Every former captain has told me being a captain is hard. Why is it hard? Have you found it to be hard? Um, just making sure that we stay together is what I like to do. Uh, emphasize all of our teammates stay together. We have to fight through adversity. It's going to happen. You know, we're going to have turnovers. We're going to have some mistakes. So just staying together and leading by example is something that I try doing. Whether that's communicating on the defensive end, whether that's, you know, if, if somebody's, uh, you know, down on themselves for having turn, for turning the ball. So just always trying to just be there for uh, my teammates. I like to bring the energy that fire, you know, push guys to, you know, to different limits that, you know, they may not have within themselves. And I think that that brings, that, that is really going to give us to the next level and um, just doing that more consistent, trying to be more consistent leader on both sides is really something that I'm trying to improve on. You're majoring in film, television, and theater and I noticed in high school you were involved in theater. Is that something that's always attracted you? Yeah, it's something that I've always been involved with, like you said, in high school. Freshman year I was in Aladdin. Uh, Michael Carter Williams was, was Aladdin and I was, you know, we're all the guards and um, I was in Guys and Dolls, one of the main leads. I was in Greece as Sonny and then I was also in Suzuko. Has your theater background helped you at all on that floor? Yeah, I would say, you know, being a little uh, animated, you know, with my gestures, if that's pounding on the chest, or again, the crowd pumped up, or, you know, encouraging my teammates is something I like to bring every game. ACC championship, back-to-back -back Elite Eights, beating North Carolina when they're number one, beating Duke five of six times, getting a double-double when Notre Dame wins at Duke for the first time. Have you ever sat back and thought about all the things this team has already accomplished since you got here? Yeah, I feel like our group, we have, but that just makes us more hungrier to, you know, to get to that next level. And um, that's something that, you know, we, we understand what we did in the past, but it's over. We're trying to move on and uh, get to new heights here. You improve rapidly every year, averaging a double-double now. What is the next step for you? Just as a team, just get to the next level, get where we want to be and um, get to new heights. You know, he was pretty mature when he got here, but his growth both on and off the court's been amazing. Yeah, he's grown as a leader, Jack. He's grown as an all-round basketball player. I think the passing part of his game has really shown itself this year. Um, he has high, high goals for himself and our team. This week's Ask Coach Bray question, and Rex Fluger runs the inside Notre Dame basketball fast break right after this time. It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com. Question of the week for Coach Bray. Now, if you would like to send in a question for Coach Bray, just log on to UND.com and scroll down the main page to get to the box that says Ask Coach Bray. This week's question comes from Pat Murphy of South Bend. Pat asks, Coach, when was the last time you had so many interchangeable players and in length on one team? Probably Ben Hansborough's year with Abramita, Scott Martin, Carlton Scott, Tyrone Nash. We kind of, those guys all moved around into different spots. And this group does remind me of that group in that aspect.
Rex Pfluger wowed basketball junkies when he began the season literally turnover free, playing 11 straight games in 218 minutes before his first miscue. He is usually the first player off the bench for Mike Bray and with good reason. His all around game, which includes shutdown defensive ability, outstanding ball handling skills, and a 43% shooting percentage from three point land, have made him an important contributor to the success of this year's Irish team and a worthy candidate to run this week's Inside Notre Dame Basketball Fast Break. First car you ever drove? Uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee. Who is your role model? My dad. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? I dance a lot. Twitter or Instagram? <sighs> Twitter. Favorite thing to do when relaxing? Watch Netflix. Favorite part of practice? Uh, shooting. Worst part of practice? Uh, I say three man weave. One thing you always hear from Coach Bray in practice? Uh, be better with the ball. Assistant coach who is most like Coach Bray? Coach Bulanis. Toughest place to play in the ACC? I gotta go with Duke. Ryan Ayers. Shooter, coach. Eric Atkins. Uh, point guard coach. Ryan Humphrey. Big man coach. Harold Swanigan. Uh, big man coach. <laughs> Best defender on the team. Uh, I believe I am. Best leaper on the team. Uh, gotta go with VJ. Best dunker on the team. Right now, VJ. Worst dunker on the team. <sighs> gotta go with Matt Gregory. Beard growing competition. Who wins, you or Coach Bray? I can't grow a beard, so I gotta go with Coach Bray. I think Rex is right. Coach Bray is gonna be tough to beat this year in the beard growing competition. It is time now for this week's Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats, Play of the Week. It was again a week with many huge plays by the Irish and two tremendously competitive ACC battles. But there is one play that will live for the ages, and that play is, of course, Matt Farrell's end of game diving midcourt steal against Virginia Tech. Notre Dame leading by three. Matt Farrell dives and grabs the ball a bit court. Here goes Matty Ice, shovels it off to T.J. Gibbs who lays it up and in. 72-67. They've been rolling the ball to midcourt the whole time. Five-point lead for Notre Dame. 39.2 seconds left. Well, after that brutal three-game road swing, it's great to be back here in the friendly confines of Purcell Pavilion. Doesn't get any easier. You got to face two of the blue bloods of the league, Syracuse and Virginia, two teams who have had your number in recent years. Two teams that we've not been very good against. You know, Syracuse dealing with their zone. Can we get good shots and move it and attack? And then Virginia's tempo and great half court defense. Uh, but it'll be good to be home. Our students are back. This place will be rocking. Irish fans are excited. The Irish are still in first place, along with Florida State and Carolina at five and one, and they will scratch and claw to maintain that position this week. We'll be back next week to break down the Syracuse and Virginia games. Until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airline, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics. Notre Dame Ticket Exchange, powered by Vivid Seats. Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS.